Iron is the treatment for iron deficiency. The total body iron of the human body is usually between 3 and 4 grams. Most of this iron, in fact two thirds of it, is used within the two iron containing proteins, haemoglobin and myoglobin. Haemoglobin is found in red blood cells and is essential for binding to oxygen and delivering it from the lungs to the peripheral tissues. Myoglobin is found within muscle cells and it stores oxygen for use by the muscle cells. So two thirds of total body iron is contained within these two iron containing proteins and of these two, much more of that two thirds is in haemoglobin than myoglobin. The other one third of total body iron is in storage and the main site for storage of iron is the liver. A tiny amount, less than 1%, is then in use in other iron-containing proteins within the body, such as iron-containing enzymes, but that's a tiny amount of total body iron. So overall, the main use of iron within the human body is in haemoglobin and myoglobin, in particular in haemoglobin. So the main way in which people become iron deficient is by losing blood. So you need to be bleeding from somewhere. Now you might think, but red blood cells, they don't live forever. I know they only live for 120 days is the magic number to commit to memory. Uh, so potentially we lose iron all the time from red blood cells dying. Well, that's not the case. When red blood cells are have ended their life and are being removed from the bloodstream, they the iron that they contain within their haemoglobin is actually recycled in the body, it's reused, so you don't lose that iron from red blood cells expiring. So generally, it's not the only way, but generally, the main way in which people end up iron deficient is by bleeding somewhere, losing blood. If you're not bleeding from anywhere, then your daily iron requirement is extremely low. The only place you do lose some iron is from the shedding of the skin cells. So as I said, a tiny bit of total body iron is contained within other iron containing proteins, iron containing enzymes generally. Uh, and the skin cells will contain some iron therefore in these structures. And when they're shed away, you are losing a tiny bit of iron. So if you're not bleeding, that's going to be the only way in which you're losing iron from your body. So if total body iron is going to remain stable, you need to be replacing that iron that you're losing. So your input needs to match that uh, loss through skin shedding. So the main way that we get iron is from the food that we eat. In particular, meat is a rich source of iron, in particular red meat. Uh, which is muscle tissue and therefore contains a lot of myoglobin and if it's bloody it's going to also contain a lot of haemoglobin. Eating liver is also a very rich source of iron because as we said previously the liver is a store for iron so its meat is very rich in iron. Vegetarian foods are generally lower in iron, but some good vegetarian sources of iron are green vegetables generally can be rich in iron, and also cereals are often fortified with iron. Uh, so breakfast cereals, if you look at the ingredients list, you'll often see iron as a listed ingredient, and that's because the uh, product has been fortified with iron, it's been added artificially. So these foods are digested by the stomach and small bowel and then the iron is absorbed by the small bowel. Now as I've said, if you're not losing blood from anywhere, your daily requirement for iron is going to be very low and in fact your dietary supply of iron might far exceed the amount that you actually need to uh, absorb. This isn't a problem because the gastrointestinal tract is very good at only absorbing the amount of iron that the body actually needs and leaving the rest of it within the luminal contents and then it will just pass through the gastrointestinal tract unabsorbed. This is to prevent the body from becoming overloaded with iron which is not good for it. So who gets iron deficiency then? One of the major groups is young women who are menstruating so if they have heavy periods and they're losing a lot of blood every month through their periods, this can lead to them 
becoming iron deficient because they're losing a huge amount of iron in that blood that they're losing. And then if their diet isn't providing sufficient iron to uh, equal the amount that they're losing, potentially because they're following a vegetarian or even a vegan diet, uh, then they're going to be losing more than they're putting in and they're going to gradually become iron deficient. So young women is a major group of people who you see iron deficiency in because they lose blood monthly through menstruation. In contrast, it's phenomenally rare to see iron deficiency in young men because they don't have any source of blood loss generally. When iron deficiency occurs in elderly people, we usually get quite worried about that because again, it usually means they're losing blood from somewhere. And one of the ways that can happen, one of the classic ways that can happen is if they've developed colorectal cancer, so a tumor within the colon or the rectum, so the large bowel. These tumors have a tendency to bleed, so you lose blood into the colon lumen. It then is carried out in the feces and it sets up a chronic form of blood loss, a chronic daily form of blood loss, and this can be draining the body of iron. So again, if their input of iron doesn't match that output of iron through the blood loss, they're going to gradually become iron deficient. So when we see iron deficiency in elderly people where we have no other obvious source of blood loss, we worry that it might mean that they've developed colorectal cancer. So depending on the comorbidities of the individual, we then investigate that to an appropriate degree. So the final scenario I want to mention for how someone could become iron deficient is conditions that result in malabsorption. So we've discussed how iron is going to be absorbed by the small bowel, as indeed most nutrients are. So conditions that damage the small bowel, in particular damage the epithelium of the small bowel, which is the part responsible for absorbing nutrients from the lumen, can result in problems with absorption of all sorts of nutrients, but including iron. So two major conditions that do damage the epithelium of the small bowel are celiac disease and Crohn's disease. So celiac disease is an inflammatory condition, well they're both inflammatory conditions, but celiac disease is an inflammatory condition of the small bowel that is caused by an inflammatory attack against gluten. So gluten is found within wheat products and barley products and it, most people can eat it absolutely fine. However, some people unfortunately their immune systems don't like it at all. And when they eat it and it gets digested by the epithelium of the small bowel, the immune system actually then ends up attacking the epithelium of the small bowel and can actually lead to a lot of damage microscopically to that epithelium of the small bowel and lead to major changes to absorptive capacity of that epithelium and therefore can lead to deficiency in a huge number of nutrients, but including iron. Crohn's disease, in contrast, is another inflammatory condition, but this time it's not against gluten. It's believed to be an inflammatory response against commensals that usually are ignored. So all of us have loads of bacteria that live within our gastrointestinal tracts and live there absolutely peacefully. Uh, and most of our immune systems ignore them and don't attack them. People with inflammatory bowel disease, and there are different forms of inflammatory bowel disease, but Crohn's is one of the major horrible forms of it, we think that what happens in these individuals is their immune systems don't ignore these commensals anymore and start attacking these, these commensals. So that's what we suspect is the mechanism behind Crohn's. But overall, what happens is that they do get inflammation throughout the gastrointestinal tract, but in particular, it can affect the small bowel and, again, damage the microscopic structures of the small bowel epithelium and lead to problems with absorption of nutrients, including iron. So both of these conditions can damage the epithelium of the small bowel and lead to problems with absorption of iron. So even if you're eating a lot of iron, it might not be being absorbed if you have these conditions and therefore you might become iron deficient from those.